their number! This time on the dirt bike shed, it's time to fix my Jeep with a little bit of help from my friends. There he is. Alright, check it out. When I drove the Jeep down to Fred's birthday party, I broke it really bad. Um, the rear axle's bent, the housing's bent. Uh, oil pans dented in. I've really sent it a little too hard. Um, so it is sitting at a friend's house north of San Diego. My buddy Mark over here picked me up at the airport. We are going up there to scoop it up and run it back to Mark's house. Got to do a huge rebuild on it and be up there back in Johnson Valley for King of the Hammers in like four days. So we're going to get through this traffic jam. And then we're gonna go fix a Jeep. All right, we made it to where my Jeep is stored. This is my buddy Eric's house. He's the dude from Motive Gear. And he was able to drag this thing from Johnson Valley to his house for me so that he could store it for a minute so that I could go and do other jobs, make some money so that I could afford to fix this thing. So. Mark hauled me up here, and we're going to load this thing on the trailer. You can see here kind of what's going on. This rear wheel has like an inch and a half of toe out. The rear axle's bent. Hopefully it'll start up. Oh, poor little Jeep. Never saw it coming. Poor little Jeep. I'm a bad owner. I'm a bad Jeep owner. garage it is time to start figuring out what parts I have and what I don't I had some parts shipped here to Mark's house some parts shipped to my parents house uh, some parts were in the Jeep at my buddy Eric's so it's time to gather all that up and see what we can do to fix this thing it's really bad All right, here's the plan. I'm at Mark's house. Um, he's letting me use his garage for a couple days and I am going to try and repair this rear end, rebuild it, do whatever I gotta do to get this thing back together so that I can go up to King of the Hammers for a couple days. I'm supposed to help out with the guys at Miles Star Tires on Friday. Um, I've got a friend of mine flying down from Spokane that's gonna ride home with me and 
if I can get this thing together, it should be a pretty cool week. Um, gonna be wrenching with Mark here in his shop garage. There he is. Um, and then get this thing done. I'll get a chance to hang out with my, my parents a little bit, my brother, my nephews, and see some old friends. So the sooner I get this thing done, the sooner I get to go have fun. So let's get to work. on this thing. I just worked on it for like two weeks straight. This is dumb. Breaking stuff is dumb. Don't break stuff. Last you saw, this stuff was all brand new. Um, I drove it like 1,300 miles through Idaho and Montana in the winter, so obviously it got into some road salt. I'm gonna have to clean off a bunch of this and repaint. Um, puked all its gear oil out. The brakes aren't looking super hot. I'm going to pull the caliper off, pull the shock off, undo the lower bag, and we're gonna get that rear axle out of there. Sorry about your floor, Mark. All right. I think all the bolts are out, and I can start yanking this axle out of here. I'm gonna prop this on my brake rotor right here. Can you hold the pinion so it doesn't just chunk forward? Keeps a really clean shop normally, he but he's, put he's, that he's been pretty messy he today. Tell, Mark's been pretty messy today. Oh my gosh, I gotta show the show people what to not do on their Jeep. Look at this. I'm gonna stand back here. Holy cow! That right there. Boom, bent. That's a big problem. Wow, I really tore this thing up. All right. Time to start taking that third member out and see where the what problems are in there, too. Two hours later, and Mark's garage is a disaster. This is the housing. It's bent and twisted and totally trashed. Pulled the third member out, and the locker itself, the side gear in it was damaged. Um, but the pinion gear and bearing and stuff is good. And then check this out. Mark is dragging in the big fancy. Look at that. I talked to the guys at Gear FX right off the bat and they were like, Oh, so you broke the old butter Jeep, huh? and they like threw together a housing for me in the quickness. So we're gonna pull this thing out of here and pull a tape measure on it, make sure it's the right width and all the specs are what I was looking for. And tomorrow we're gonna to start putting all this stuff back together. 
All right, it's Sunday morning. I went and picked up some more parts and oil and all kinds of stuff. We're in Mark's garage getting the table all cleaned off. I tore into the locker to see what I had broken on there last night, and I've got some parts on order right now. Um, so yeah, last night was good. We got this thing all torn down, axle out, unboxed the new housing and double checked to make sure that is the right width. So I'm gonna set it up here on this little cart that Mark made and start figuring out how to duplicate tabs on that that look like this, but aren't all bent and twisted. So time to get busy. This is gonna be easy, right? Piece of cake. I mean, the second time is always easier than the first time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally housing Mark's garage. <laughs> every time, every time I show up, I'm like, turn off the music. I need these tools. Where's this? Where is that? We're getting there. I've got my shop set up over here, pretty dialed. Got this rad axle cart going on, welder all dialed in. So now it's time to weld these puppies on there. But that's the wrong one, it needs to go that way. All right, I got a little angle find finder here and I've got this axle set up at flat on the face there and I'm checking angle here, I'm at like 40 degrees, so I can do the same thing here. This is flat. I'll put that thing at like 40 degrees and weld it up. All right, these are these are the shock mounts from Barnes, and they're the same as what I had on the other rig, on the other axle. So I'm just gonna weld them all up and get them on this one. Mark totally smoked the brakes on his truck when we were hauling my Jeep. So he's out there doing a brake job. Let's go check in on him. We pulled up to my parents' house yesterday and this thing was like smoking the brakes. What the pads look like, Mark? Here's the good one. Oh, doggy. So I guess you are not driving, you still gotta do the brakes. Yeah. So. We just slammed pads on it. It's still got power stop rudders and some Wagner Bart's house pads. This thing's good to go. We'll be in Johnson Valley in no time. All right, shock mounts are going on. The lower link mounts are on. These are, like I said, the same Barnes mounts that I had on the other axle. So just kind of showing you how I was able to get the lower link brackets like dialed in with the angle finder and then I'm using just a cardboard that I copied that angle over there and I'm using it over here to get this angle right. Right there. All right, I'm gonna tack this up. Give it a little, little something there. I'm gonna tack it and it'll move and then I'll be like, oh dang. I'm going to try and tack it in the middle so it doesn't pull it too much. Go a little here.
All right, that's the last of the easy stuff. Now I've got to fabricate bag mounts, and then once the bag mounts are fabricated, then I've got to do the upper link mounts. So it's time to like, I guess start working for real. Action. All right, the axles come together. These are my new bag mounts, lower link mounts, shock mounts. Now I've got to figure out the upper triangulated link bars. I started making a jig, a fixture of sorts, so that I could get these to go inside of there, but you can see I totally housed that, so I need to remake my fixture. And we have Ted over here, tall Ted, world famous. He is repairing the oil pan. Look at that I've got a super smashed oil pan on there. And my buddy Eric Pilar had an extra one, so we're going to swap it out. We got a bunch of metallic in there. That's probably from back when I put the new main and rod bearings in it. Hopefully it's not like actual damage because that's pretty nasty. That is gross. It's like candy brown metal flake paint. You should paint your Jeep that color. Kind of a good color. All right, back to it. I got to fix that fixture and start making tabs. All right, it is almost eight o'clock at night and I'm moving along on this thing pretty good. Just wanted to give you a little update. I've got this fixture made and in place and I've started making all these tabs. Um, these are all coming together pretty good. So basically I'm gonna get these tabs all tacked into place and then I'll unbolt the fixture Cut a couple little tack welds here and that thing will come out. And then I should have a nice spot for the link arms to live. So you can kind of see here, this one is loose still. These ones I got tacked in. Um, yeah, this thing's really coming together. So I gotta bust out the cardboard and scissors, make this last tab on this side. I'm gonna get those tacked in and then I'll probably make a little piece that gussets in here and like a triangle gusset on these guys so that there's a little more structure side to side. And that's it for the, that's gonna be it for the night. Um, all in all, like to get this axle tabbed out and kind of ready to go within one day is pretty awesome. So. Um, finish that up and then tomorrow morning hopefully I can start reassembling this. I do have a few issues with the locker and parts missing so I'm gonna have to drive a couple hours in the morning to go get parts for that. But otherwise, totally doing killer on this. I'm stoked. I really wish I wouldn't have bent and broke the old one but this is gonna be far nicer in the long run than that old stock housing was. You can see how bent that thing is from here. Holy cow. Burp. Burp. Taco shop. Second trip. Look at the carne asada nachos. I'm going to give the phone to Mark. I'm going to start cutting this bracket. I think that's the last one I'm doing tonight. Cardboard template. Mark got me this really nice, like, kind of thin, easy to cut stuff. Mark it out.
a good day. That's enough. It's late. I'm getting out of here. Tomorrow I will finish this thing up and it will be under the bridge. Or it won't. I might just be running around trying to fix stuff tomorrow too. Mark, what day is it? Uh, Monday. It's Monday. And I'm back at Mark's house. I had to go two hours north of San Diego this morning. My dad and I drove up there to pick up a new locker for the rear end because the old one is destroyed. Um, I picked up some other stuff here. Oh, I grabbed a rear main seal also. So Mark last night had fixed up the oil pan. So we're going to throw a rear main in it, put the oil pan back on, and I'm going to weld this rear axle up. Come on, locker. I'm going to weld the rear axle up and uh, start putting that Jeep together. And it's beautiful out here. All right, back to work. That's Honey. Honey's a good girl. I put this new rear main seal in it. Working on an oil pan. Mark went and picked up hardware and got a wheel swapped out. Yeah. How'd it go? Perfect. Good. This is Mark's lifted Civic. Everybody, everybody should have a work truck like this. Sick! Mm. A not broken wheel. Sweet. Not as good as the axle builders, but good enough. Mark's little welder is ripping. There it is, all the welding is done. I've got all those Barnes brackets back on there. I did a bunch of booger welding on it right next to the like really nice welds that GearFX did. Um, it's coming together, it's time to paint this thing all up and sling it under the Jeep. I've got a little bit of work to do on the third member swapping a locker out, but uh, this thing should be under the Jeep tonight. Yeah. The axle's out of the paint booth and we're throwing the third member together. I'm trying, well, basically I had to get a new ARB locker for it because I destroyed the old one. So swapped the ring gear onto the new locker and that thing's all ready to go. And I'm trying something new here. My buddy Brody said, <laughs> um, if it's a paper gasket, you want to use grease on it instead of like RTV, so I'm trying it. We'll see if grease in the paper gasket is where it's at. So, third member's about to go in. Come on, it's getting deep, so I just wanted to make sure. Very heavy. Yeah, that's good. I rotated a little bit this way. Up, there you are. Rotate a little more. Right there. And then go flat. Sweet. Get in the home. Look at that. Oh. It doesn't seem like it's ripping the airline out. <laughs> Which is a good thing. All right. Get all my hardware on here. Look at that. It's coming together. There it is. Third member's in the axle. The axle's kind of together. Mark's ready to get out of here. I'm ready to get out of here. I'm exhausted.
All right, I don't know where we left off last night, but it was 11 o'clock. We were all super tired. I had help from Mark and Brody and his buddy and totally got this axle together. Mark had some leftover brake rotors from an old disc brake kit that happened to fit. And I've got that third member in with the new ARB locker in it. All the tabs are in, paint's done. It's full of oil. This thing took a full gallon of gear oil. So I feel like that should be good for whatever I gotta do. So anywho, Mark and I are gonna lift this thing down onto this little dolly, scoot it under there, start hooking up links and stuff, and hopefully test drive this thing by noon. all together again um whole new axle in there axle shafts locker all kinds of stuff we got the damaged wheel swapped out i'm gonna go test drive this thing and see if it's as good as it once was and then it's time to go pick up my buddy jesse from the airport that's tomorrow morning and then we're heading back up to johnson valley for king of the hammers and hopefully get a little bit of wheeling in so I can show you how this thing works. Because it does actually work pretty good. San Diego right by the bay there's Navy ships over there and stuff I got Jesse picked up at the airport we're gonna go try and get this thing up to Johnson Valley um, axle seems good engine seems a little unhappy we'll find out more about that later what a beautiful day all right we made it about an hour north of the airport and Stop for gas and notice that we're puking a bunch of gear oil out. Dripping gear oil off of the belly pan here. So I'm going to crawl under there and check it out. See what's going on. Jesse ran over to Taco Bell. And he's grabbing us some food. We'll get this thing sorted out and keep moving. We're only, I guess, about an hour and a half or so from the lake bed. That's not good. That's not good. We confirmed that that's not transfer case oil, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna get in here and pop the uh, shifter out so that we can look down in the transmission, see if it's got enough oil. If not, we're squeezing some of that in there. Well, we're putting that in anyways, because we got the, the shifter pulled out and I couldn't get to the fill plug deal on the side of the transmission because it was super tight, so we're basically looking down from the top into the transmission to see if it has oil in it. It looks like it has oil, so to figure out if it really does or not, we grab the dipstick off the engine and I'm able to run that down and actually hit the bottom of the case and then come back up and it's got oil to here. We kind of did some math and Jesse was saying that the oil needs to be up to about here. So I'm going to throw a quart in this and see if that's the problem. I don't really know what's going on, but if we can drive this thing and keep oil in it, it'll 
probably keep running. Once you like let this stuff get away from you, that's when you burn up your truck. So even though it's not really preventative maintenance at this point, we're just trying to keep it alive. But still, if you start seeing oil spraying or whatever off your truck, like take the time and do stuff like this because this will save you the rest of your trip. Hopefully, we'll find out. It's crazy that they had all this stuff figured out in 1989, <laughs> and we've been screwing around messing it up worse since then. Oh, it has like eight inches of wheel travel. Yeah, that's all you need. And it's pretty good. It's race time. It seems like everybody's rolling in, and today is the UTV race. So, I'm actually heading over to Chocolate Thunder and over to back door to try and do some trail cleanup stuff with the gambler guys so these guys are going to be out racing getting rad and my buddy jesse and i'll be picking up some trash all right we're almost up here to back door it looks like the tread lightly crew and the gambler crew have like teamed up for this little trail cleanup so buddy tate was like come on out so we're gonna go out there and check it out. Luckily Tate's here. I think he was flying in this morning and wasn't even around yet. So let's see if he's over here. So this thing is put together by Sons of Smokey, which is like the nonprofit for the Gambler 500 guys. And basically the app, there's an app, the Sons of Smokey app, and what you do is if you see big stuff like a boat in your neighborhood or a boat on public land or an old camper trailer, big trash, you mark that and typically you, you can like mark it if you can't go and get it and then you go back with the Sons of Smoky crew and go and clean up stuff and they do organized events and all that. Jesse's out here grabbing little stuff. We're getting it done. Got an old beer can over here. Coming in hot. Oh, Coors, Coors Banquet. Coors Original. Take a sip. That one's probably Colorado Kool Aid. 
That one's probably not been here forever. Sometimes it's cool if you find like an old hams or something with a pull tab. It's been here for 50 years. Oh, there's some more junk over there. Gatorade bottle. That was a perfectly good coolant overflow tank at one point. Alright, we made it over here. It's kind of chaos. I'm going to drop the bags off here with Tread Lightly and go do some wheeling. Butter Jeep down. We're out here in the middle of the desert digging out the tool bags. There it is. We got a loose front wheel bearing going on over here. A little clunking from the front end, so I think we can pull the hub off real quick. Tighten up the wheel bearing. Get back in the race. Couldn't pick a better place to come out and tighten my wheel bearings. Uh, I always like auto parts store parking lots for repairs normally, but out in the middle of the desert, it's also a good spot to work on your junk. This side was just clunking around a little bit. We were feeling it. So I figured we would check on it because, again, we got to drive this thing home and burning up a wheel bearing on the highway is not going to be a good thing. So pull the hub out, pull the spindle nut off, and then the lock collar, and then we'll tighten up that inside spindle nut and put it all back together. Get out of there. Come on. Part of the reality of this, a friend of mine, Dana, was driving this Jeep up here in the dunes, kind of whipping it around. You can see his marks there. Rolled it, got ejected. He was in his lap belt, but he still got ejected and he was hanging by his leg. He's got a big, a big contusion on his cheek, his side of his face, and problems with his left leg. So, had EMT and paramedics up here, got them all stabilized, and now they got life flight in. So he's gonna take a little flight and go get fixed up. Hate to see it, but this was definitely best case scenario for an ending like that.
All right, it's time to load up. Sorry, I didn't get more Wheeland footage. We got, how much Wheeland did we do, Jesse? A lot. We got that one rock little waterfall. <laughs> Action packed in the little better Jeep. But we got to make some miles. This thing is not really feeling all that good. So we're going to try and hit the road now and make some miles. See what parts and repairs we got to do along the way. Good times out at Hammertown though. That was a good week for a few days. Good morning, dirtheads. Uh, we made it to Minden, Nevada last night. Thanks for having us. And check this out. We have 850 miles to go and it is dumping snow out here. If you'll notice, this is the same over there where that horse trailer is, is where we tried. We attempted to rebuild a Chevy K5 Blazer on dirt every day for I just lived in that parking spot for like three days. Um, anyways, we got our um, we got our cinnamon rolls to go. It's good to know that at the Holiday Inn Express, the COVID didn't kill the cinnamon roll. I was really worried about that, <laughs> but it's all good still. All right, we're gonna hit the road. We gotta beat the plow trucks and police that are gonna tell us we can't drive this thing down the highway in the snow. Adventure! That puked just the right amount of oil out last night. That's not excessive. Let's go. Flying J and got the most important thing of the trip, the new Bluetooth speaker for the dash. Jesse's over here wiring up, wiring it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Jesse's <laughs> we're tired. Jesse's wiring it up. Doing some top notch stuff. Oh boy. It's too short. Life is too short. Totally not gonna burn this Jeep down in the middle of the desert this afternoon. All right, if all goes well, we'll be able to listen to the King of the Hammers race on our new fancy speaker. hoping that I was going to be able just to park it and forget about it for a while, but it kind of does need some repairs. You can hear the belt squealing or the alternator whining or whatever's going on there. Uh, I got some engine noises, I got some transmission noises, but all in all this Jeep made it almost 3,000 miles on a crazy road trip and halfway through it I had to build a whole new rear axle for it. So, I don't know, it's back home. I made it happen. I'm stoked. 
it's time to get to work either on this thing or that thing or that thing or maybe just go hang out with family and enjoy my Sunday but either way thank you guys for watching that's it for this dirt head shed uh, I guess uh, I guess we'll tear into this again one of these days